All right, I got to do this video because it's this is so gosh darn cute. I I just this East LA girl went on a date with a masculine guy and felt the feminism leaving her body. Home girl reverted back to factory settings. Home girl rever- six years of woman and gender studies down the drain. Ah, just watch. She is so cute. All right. <clears throat> Guys, I went on a date this week and I felt the feminism leaving my body. I live on the east side of LA and if you don't know what that means, it's sort of like the artsier <clears throat> part of LA, you know, it's, it's people say it's like Brooklyn and New York. Like, so I go on dates with a lot of men and women who, you know, live over here. There's always a negotiation about who pays and that's great. I like to pay for people, all that. But what I will say is that I sort of fell into going on a date with the most guys guy I've ever been on a date with. And he's from West West, you know, Santa Monica. He's a bro, right? A guys guy is usually not my type. Like I cannot remember the last time that I went on a date with like a straight bros bro. You know what I'm saying? But it befell me. It befell me in an organic fashion. So I'm on this date with this guy. And the thing about a guys guy is he's putting his card down. He's paying for everything. And I really... Just, it sort of activated something feral in me. I'm not gonna lie. He went to like another bar and he went, he was gonna go to the bathroom. So I was getting prepared to pay for our drinks cause he's been paying all night. Of course I'm gonna pay for the next round. But as he's going to leave for the bathroom, he turns to me and he hands me his credit card and he goes, here's my card, get us whatever. <laughs> it might be time for me to get away from all these, you know, liberal snowflakes on the east side so you know hopefully this is genuine i don't know um but it makes sense to me um she's this is her ball <laughs> they're pointing this out there's hope for the future yet this liberal girl sitting here eating cereal out of an artsy cat bowl talking about the men and women she's gone on dates with and her heart is a flutter for this guy's guy out of santa monica who was confident assertive responsible and caring uh, I love this. Uh, yeah, memes by the conservatives and Christians are awesome. What we have here is a classic example of a reality reasserting itself. If you want to have a chance with me, you have to deconstruct your toxic mix masculinity. Yes, queen. I did it, my queen. You're totally my type. Um, 12 to 16 years of public school teachings teaches girls that are infinite genders. They can date and masculinity is toxic, but it can all be undone in one night. These are great shots they, you know, of her joy, enthusiasm, like a squealing little happy girl. Um, you know, as a father, I want to see my girl happy like this. And or they are. My, my daughters are happy. And they have struggles and all that. But they're just full of joy being, knowing uh, what a man is, what a husband is. You know, I just, this, this is so cute. Look at that. That is so cute. I hope this is genuine. I hope that she has a good relationship with this man. I hope this man, this bros bro is a Christian man and he's honorable and teaches her about honor, honor and dignity and not, you know, the bad stuff or exploitive stuff or terrible, you know? Um, anyway, that was, that was just a fun video. I had to do it about men and women and who we are. Um, and I don't, I don't mind there being, you know, uh, exceptions to the rule in a range of things, but the goal is for, for this or for, for men to be leaders and, and to be assertive and controlling, but not to the point, you know, not oppressive, um, and not controlling in the sense of, um, telling them what to do as much as controlling in the sense of making sure that the situation is under control to then do things that are safe and good for you, me and the family or whatever. Um, that kind of controlling, not controlling the sense of, you know, her life, what she wants to do more the control that everything is safe and what she wants to do then fits in with that. Uh, kind of, you know, I don't know. I'm going off a little bit on here, going off, but just, that was just a wonderful little video. And I just wanted to post that or talk about it. And just how joyful that is. Um, and I, I hope, it's, it's genuine and the video, and I hope that she has a great life with this man becomes his wife, has children thereof. That's what we want for everyone. That's what we want, you know, so for homosexuals, for pagans, we actually want you 
trans, we don't want that for you because we don't think that's going to make the, you happy and society happy. What we want is um, you give up your lust, selfish desires to be with someone as a man and woman, husband and wife, and dedicate your life to the children thereof. It's exhausting. It's hard. Uh, you lose yourself in it because you have to give up yourself for your children. You know, the, the best time of a, the, the best selfish time of your life should be when you're a child and growing up and being silly and, and rebellious as a teen and all that. Then after that, you got to give that up and become the person who then as an adult d- does the same for the next generation. You know, you give up your now you stop being a teen, you stop being a kid and you take care of the next generation and, and, and spoil them so that they can have fun for a while. And then when they get, you know, so the fun and silliness you should have is when you're a kid, but then when you become an adult, you give that up. And the, the true joy is raising your kids and reliving some of that joy, you know, that selfish joy through them. Um, and it can get kind of crazy for sure, but um, that's really the goal here in, in Christianity, I think. Uh, obviously, there's plenty more to it, you know, refinement and, and fellowship and edification about it all, but... Um, you know, that's what we want for, for trans and homosexuals and the sexual culture. We don't want that for you. We, not because we understand you, you're seeking joy, but that's not the true joy. That's going to degrade and you and society. Imagine if we, we imagine homosexuality, if we, we encourage that over and over and over. And so more and more men become man, man, you know, and then they want children, but they need, in order for them to have children, they need to, uh, remove the mother. They need to, they need to exploit a mother or get rid of the mother or replace the mother with them with two men. And imagine that becoming 20, 30, 40, 50% of the, uh, the culture, because whoever you are is what you want for everyone else. Whatever life you're living, that's what you're going to sell to the rest of the world. And imagine then, and they're doing that. They're, the homosexual culture is doing, pushing homosexuality. So imagine that, imagine if 10 or 20% of the people are doing that. They're, 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 and the kids they have are based off of not a true family. The kids are going to grow up not having that truth in them. They're not going to have the mother and the, their, their mother and their father, not, not just that 20%, but the, you know, it's going to spread out to the another 20% who falter and uh, fail. And, and it already is. It's what 50 or more than 50% of kids now don't even have their own mother and father, you know, in the home. That's, that is depressing, man. That's, that's, that's hard. I, I grew up like that and, and it was, and it, it ate through every day. It was depressing in that sense that my mom is over there and my dad is here or that my mom's here with her new husband and my dad is out there with some other woman. That was incredibly and still is incredibly depressing. And even in grandparenthood, it was, I, it was depressing to me and frustrating for my own daughters. They did not get to have a grandmother and grandfather come here, you know, experience that they had a grandfather, but then he was distracted by his wife and cause kind of only had one foot in the door here and then had to go or leave or whatever with her to her thing. And my mother, some of the grandmother w- was a little better there cause they're more local, but, but she always had to tend to, you know, that side of the family, um, and not really focus on this side of the family you know, whatever it's, it was, it was still better. It was still fine, but I did not have the full, you know, attention of a grandmother, grandfather for, for the, for my family. And it was frustrating, um, to me. So my entire life is, you know, based off of that. And, um, and I've seen grandmother and grandfathers come to their kids and it, I've seen it and it I can tell the quality of it was better. The, 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 the focus, the intensity was so much more joyful. You don't have to explain, Oh, this is my husband. Who's not, you know, the grandfather, you know, you know, there's none of that with the kids. They were just, just jump right in connection right there. And so I'm, I'm grateful. I'm glad that I, with my wife are brought up our two daughters. So they had a father and a mother together no strangers coming in and having sex with their mother or father, but their own mother and father, uh, in their home with them. That was thankfully before I became a Christian, the one thing that helped me was, I mean, I, when I was a 
pagan atheist, I wanted to leave the wife all the time, like because of lust, because of porn, because of lust, because of porn. And thankfully though, I think God gave me a vision seeing my wife with another man. And then my daughters come out of their room to see a strange man in the morning. That to me, like dug at my core somehow. And I said, I I can't leave her, even though I want to leave her or whatever. And thankfully when I became Christian, I'm like, I ain't leaving her. (laughs) Now I know what love is. You know, I thought when I went before, before I was a Christian, I loved my wife so much, even though I porn and lust and all that. I love my daughter so much. I'm so such a good person. I love them. And I was so mean to them. Like I was so loving to them. And then I'd get angry and yell at them for, you know, the wrong things and stuff. When I became a Christian and I, here's how I envisioned it. I went, I envisioned going up, you know, climbing the mountain and seeing God up there, you know, like the whole Buddhist thing or whatever and saying, God, I, I've come here to tell you, uh, you know, I love my wife and I love my children, but I love you more. You know, I'm on the mountain telling you, I love you more than them. I want to tell you that I I love you the most. That's right. That's kind of like Buddhism. You, I give up everything for the truth. I'm willing to give up everything for the truth, um, of you, you know, Buddhism or whatever. But I, I translate it then to God. I love you more than my wife. And then, then, but then I, this is like the vision or feeling or notion I got when I said that to God in my, my imaginations or whatever. God then said to me, good, that you love me more than your wife and your children. That is good. Now I will show you how to love your wife and children. That was the first thing he said to me or the, the, the man, when I imagined this and I didn't think of it, it came, you know, in my little imagination, he's like, good, I will now show you how to love your wife and children. And I'm like, and literally my wife and daughter, my daughter, my older daughter was a little old enough at the time. They saw a huge change in me. My wife finally said, this isn't right. And I'm going into this now. This, I don't care. Uh, my wife said to me, okay, we have to have a rule. We can't have sex every night. <laughs> That's, that was, she was like, okay. I almost thought that she now, like maybe he should get back on the porn or something. Cause I was, I couldn't believe how much I lusted now after her only when I became Christian. When the Holy Spirit, when I accepted you, it's magical. All us Christians have that secret nod, that secret handshake. No, you know, when I gave up porn and that's a whole nother interesting, fascinating story with a vision that I got, you know, that was kind of the only time God really, uh, really gave me a vision that, or maybe the, the mountain thing too. I don't know. I haven't had any visions since. So I'm not, so, so don't think that I'm trying to sell for the Lord RPG and he gave me a vision to do it. And I'm, and I, and I think, I think he only gave me what I needed, you know, I really, whatever I, the amount I desire my wife now is beyond when I was a pagan, what I, you know, sexually, beautiful, uh, admirationally, beautifully, as she's gotten older and you know, the wrinkles and the scars and the, and the beauty, they're beautiful to me. Like I want her hair to be gray because she's getting older. I, I want that. I want her aging. I don't want fakeness out of her. I don't want fake boobs. Like I used to desire, you know, she works out. She's got a good little body, but you know, petite, anyway, my point being, I love her the way she is. I love her scar. She has cancer scar. She has birth scar kind of stuff. I love those. I don't want to change it or whatever. I want her to be, those are the, to me, the scars, she's bearing the scars of our life together, like our journeys together. And I love them. I love her so much now. Because God showed me how to love and, and my, and my daughters, I learned, I learned that I, that I was angry, you know, that I had anger issues and I put it out of my daughters and I, you know, I asked my daughter for forgiveness, the older one, especially because that's the one that took the brunt of it. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't abusive or anything. I just, yeah, I would just yell at them for stupid things, get angry, you know, and I know now that that anger is wrong. Um, bursting out in anger and getting, it's a prideful, self-righteous anger, uh, in a emotional, you know, and we Christians learn about this. We learn not to allow that kind of anger to control our lives. 
and to, to have that anger against your wife. You know, we learn about this. We, we learn about it in a fellowship and in the Bible study. You, you can't, and it's an amazing thing because it's very demonic. You, when you get that kind of anger, it really, it really builds on you and you lash out. And I can, I know why people get divorced because of irreconcilable differences. I know it's because of that. I mean, my assumption, because that's what I had, you know, and you get this sort of self-righteous pedestal that you're right and they're wrong and you, and you know, and you'll never need to, for, you know, I'll ne- you know, I'm always right. We're going to get a divorce, you know, because I don't need that, you know, whatever it is. I don't want to go in. But I, I remember now, I remember how I slowly learned not, you know, the, I slowly learned to be calm when I got in, when, if I ever got upset at the wife or something, I learned not to lash out at her, but to be calm in my discussions with her and just, and, and it was a wonderful thing when I finally figured that out <clears throat> and became a true leader with her. Like I became a real leader after I was able to do it that way. And she became emotional and, but it was a wonderful because she understood I was calm and then she became calm again. And, and, and it was rare and, and what, and, but anyway, it was for me personally, it was a good experience because I, I learned not to be so self-righteously angry at anything that to be calm and to discuss and to say things. And when she got emotionally angry back, I stayed at the same level of calmness and that brought her back down too to calmness. And, um, and so I always have to remember, you know, remember to return to that. If ever I do get these feelings of self-righteous, you know, I'm so, so, and, and I'm getting it now too, a lot with my daughter, you know, and her quarter coming into the house and I'm getting all this self-righteous anger for them doing little, little silly things. And I'm like, no, I got, I got to calm down this has to be a comfortable place for them to do silly things, you know, eat my food that I've saved. Right. I would burst out in anger in my past life about that. I got to let them have that ribeye steak. That's okay. You know, calm down, Ron, <laughs> let them be comfortable here. You know, maybe I can bring it up in a calm conversation that don't eat my last ribeye steak, you know, as an example, um, unless, you know, let's, let's make sure we, you at least let me know so I could get another one or something like that. So calm, you know, I learned that in Christianity. I didn't learn it. You know, I didn't yell or scream. I want this place to be a comfortable place for them. And I have to be calm about my angry anger or freak outs, you know, about stuff like that and not let little things make me turn this place into a stressful, horrible place for them. Anyway, about that girl, uh, the East LA girl, that was so cute. I'm wonderful. And I just hope the best for her. I really, man, I'd love to see like what happens later, but whatever. Yeah. Um, another little fun little talk here about that. Oh. Remember the game of life. Roll holy dice.